Well, let's look at another verse in, in Job 28. Turn back to Job 28 with me, please. And I, I could go on and on endlessly on this, but when God made the earth, he sure put his fingerprints all over it. Meteorologically, in other words, the, the study of our atmosphere, it says in Job 28, verse 24, he looks to the ends of the earth and he sees under the whole heavens, verse 25, to establish a weight for the wind and apportion the waters by measure. Now, when, when scientists, meteorologists, study our atmosphere, only a few hundred years ago was it found by scientists that the air above us has weight. In fact, there is a column of air that goes straight up, you know, miles and miles into the sky until it finally thins out and we're in outer space, that's pushing down on every one of us. Our body has the equivalent of 16,000 pounds of air pushing down on us. You know, I've been tired this week, but after I read that, I really got tired to think about carrying around 16,000 pounds of air. But that's called one atmosphere. That's what we were built. And if we had less or more, it would affect us. That's what we were built for. And look what it says in verse uh, uh, 16, or I mean 24. He looks the ends of the earth, sees under the whole heavens. Verse 25, he established a weight for the air. No one knew that the air had weight. Nobody until in the Renaissance times and after when scientists began doing experiments and finally in Britain in the 18th century, they finally established the weight of air. Amazing. Let's see. How about Ecclesiastes? It goes Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Let me show you one verse in Ecclesiastes that has been laughed at up until 200 years ago. It says in Ecclesiastes 1.7, All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers came, thither they return. Now, that verse was written a thousand years before Christ, 1000 B.C., long before the science of hydrology was known. But what the, the Bible says is there's a water cycle on the earth and water circulates from the ground to the seas to the air and back to the ground. In fact, all the rivers do run into the sea at the tune of 286,000 cubic miles. Cubic miles? You know how much water goes into the ocean every year? An equivalent of, you know, a cubic mile is a mile wide, a mile long, and a mile high. 286,000 of those. I mean, that's huge amounts of water. But yet, how high do the oceans get after 286,000 cubic miles of water run in from the rivers? They don't rise an inch. Why? Because God has put the greatest energy system to work so that over the oceans they begin evaporating. The evaporation rises because heat rises and, and it gets up there and it's carried along by the winds and then as it cools it condenses and it, over the cool land masses it rains down again and it runs down through the rivers and then it goes out in the ocean. Then it, there it goes again. And God has made that system to cleanse the earth, to refresh and renew the earth, and to feed the earth, and that is part of his plan. I mean, how did he design such a perfect system? It says in, uh, back to Job, and then we're going to go to Isaiah, but look at Job uh, 36, 26, because Job talks about this 4,500 years ago. It says in Job 36, verse 27, if you go back 4,500 years to the oldest book in the world and listen to God discuss evaporation and condensation, he talks about vapor clouds and precipitation, all the elements of hydrology. Job 36, 27. For he draws up drops of water. Ha <laughs> ha. Look at that. He's, that is the evaporation. That's a, a Hebrew way of saying evaporate. He draws up the drops of water, which distill as rain from the mist. There's condensation which the clouds drop down and pour abundantly on man. That's precipitation. Right there, the hydrological cycle. 4,500 years before it was discovered. 